Well, firstly, how do you react to the news that GB News viewers and listeners have managed to raise a stonking £112,000 for the Royal British Legion in just over 24 hours? What do you think that says? Well, I think people care, and it shows that people care. And uh, we've got this connectedness of people who should care about these things. Uh, no man is an island in John Dunn's words, and we are diminished by the death of people if we don't care. And that's why, regardless of what happens in uh, Brighton with a sort of council or something, you know, the empathy and understanding for the sacrifice of those who came before and those who still live with those traumas is something which should connect us all. Yeah, absolutely. Just want to give a shout out to Louise who's just put five pounds in. Whether or not you put in five pounds or 500 pounds, it all matters. It absolutely matters. And it's massively appreciated because I do know the times are the cost of living crisis. So thank you very much. Just giving dot com forward slash page for news poppy. But Chip, let's ch chat about what I was asking some of the uh, people of Brighton there, which is a concern maybe that the younger generations are not taught to have pride maybe in our military heroes and maybe not taught the the bravery and the stoicism and the achievements frankly that have allowed through their sacrifice have allowed the young people of this country to have the kind of freedoms and life that they enjoy yeah i think there's three parts to that it's who are we where did we come from and what does this mean to our identity and it's all those great values which are still really enshrined in the values and standards of the armed forces, which are the key things here. And it's the loss of those values which seems to be the main part of the erosion of society, where we've sort of breaking each other apart, each other apart rather than coming together with all those things to do with integrity and honesty, matehood, sacrifice, all those key adjectives which define what military service and sacrificing for each other in times of need when there is a just war to go and, and fight against evil in the world, which we see today in various theatres uh, in the world today. Look, I am here and I want to say a special thank you to the Port Slade Royal British Legion Club who have opened their doors early for us, on, actually on a day, the one day of the week that they are normally uh, not open. So a massive thank you to them for a very short notice making us feel so well here and that is part of the veteran community of course that I know stick together and always like to do right by each other but Chick can I ask you we're a couple of weeks away from the remembrance service on Sunday walking past the cenotaph that same cenotaph that's been barricaded off that same street that has been the scene of so many protests and demonstrations taking place recently some of them absolutely fine some of them definitely not. Tensions, I think, at boiling point in this country. How vital for you is it that the police do police what happens on the Saturday and the Sunday in a couple of weeks' time impeccably and make sure that our services and our remembrance isn't desecrated? Well, it's absolutely vital. And of course, Cenotaph is sort of holy ground, really, for the military because it is the centre of the... Um, celebrations, but it's worth reminding ourselves that in terms of sacrifice, that the number of doubly thankful villages, that is those who didn't have someone killed in either the First World War or the Second World War, is tiny and therefore everywhere in the UK and actually in Ireland there is a physical manifestation of the sacrifice of the last hundred plus years because there are only something like I think uh, 30 hamlets or small communities which lost no one killed in action in the First or Second World War. So you could drive back to London through any hamlet, village, and you would find a war memorial of which the Cenotaph re represents the centre of that. And by one of those bizarrely, bizarre, uh, bizarre fate, fatalistic things, one of the places which didn't lose anyone killed in the First or Second World War is the inappropriately named Upper Slaughter in um, in Gloucestershire and just worth reflecting because of the tensions we still have with uh, Southern Ireland or ERA these days that I believe that there was no one, no community in Ireland that didn't have anyone who wasn't killed in the First World War or Second World War. So even though they're now a separate entity, people uh, then did volunteer for the British Empire and to fight the evil of um, of militarism of the Prussians in World War Two, and of course Nazism, uh, World War One, and Nazism in World War Two. Yeah, points well made there, Chip. Look, just while I've got you, can I 
ask you a question about a, a very current and a very real thing that our Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said. He's actually said to expect some kind of terror attack at the moment. Is he urging us, do you think, to be vigilant there or, or is he actually seriously warning that it's going to happen? Well, I think we're always vigilant. And the key thing to look for is when JTAC, the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, uh, raised the threat level based on any chatter. And that uh, raising of the threat level would be based on intent, capability and timeframes. And that would lead to increased um, protective security measures from the police and other agencies involved in security. Now, the contest strategy, counter-terrorist strategy, only came out three months ago in July this year that did did tell us that the threat from terrorism was enduring and evolving. The events that we see over the last couple of weeks uh, might suggest that it is evolving again because grievances and ideology can power people to physical force acts, which might not have happened before. And there's a melange of sort of issues that come together in what we would term salad bar terrorism, where you take an issue of Palestine, you take an issue of Hamas, you take an issue of what, what is potentially perceived as Israeli war atrocities, they all propel you to action. So it's that sort of melange of things which can be really, really dreadful for the future. And it's these um, lone actors, what is now called self-initiated terrorists, which are the most difficult to find, who can be powered by these what they see on social media, the fractions of social media, and by the, uh, the visual images that they see happening in the last three or so weeks. Major General Chip Chapman, thank you very, very much.